There's something new from the Voyager probes. NASA has now announced that the space veterans flew through a mysterious wall of fire during their journey into interstellar space and were confronted with temperatures of up to 50,000 degrees Celsius. Today, we'll show you what this red-hot cosmic zone is all about and why the probes didn't immediately burn up. But that's not all. Voyager 1 also recorded a powerful gamma-ray burst that left even the most experienced astronomers baffled. In addition to the unprecedented intensity of the spectacle, the burst and its afterglow simply did not fit our current models, leaving researchers to decipher an impossible event. So be sure to stay tuned until the end if you want to know exactly what Voyager 1 discovered out there. Have you ever heard of the Voyager probes? Launched in space in 1977, Voyager 1 has now traveled an incredible 25 billion kilometers between itself and the Sun. And there is only one other man-made object that has ventured as far into the depths of space, Voyager 2, which is now just under 21 billion kilometers away from us. But the story becomes even more astonishing when we remember that the two identical probes were not actually designed to one day venture into the mysterious interstellar space. On the contrary, their original purpose was simply to shed some light on our cosmic neighborhood and investigate the outer planets which were still largely unexplored at the time. But once this task had been accomplished, NASA decided to let the space pioneers continue their journey and turn them into the first spacecraft in history to leave the confines of the solar system. But if you think that this could only have been achieved by a true marvel of technology, you're mistaken. Compared to the devices we all carry around in our pockets today, Voyager 1 and 2 seem hopelessly outdated. No wonder, since they are, after all, children of their time and represent the state of the art in the 1970s, which, in plain language, means that our modern cell phones exceed the storage capacity of the Voyager probes by a million times. The scientific mission data is still stored on magnetic tapes with a storage capacity of 536 Mbit, and even the transmission rates of our mobile phone connections today are almost 40,000 times higher than those of the NASA veterans. Despite its outdated technology, Voyager 1 successfully set course for the edge of the heliosphere and reached the sun's protective magnetic bubble in 2012. Its sister followed six years later, and since then, the probes have been giving us a unique insight into a region of the cosmos that has never been explored before, but recently. And this is the exciting part. NASA announced that on its journey into interstellar space, the duo encountered a structure that experts are calling a wall of fire. And this name hits the nail on the head. While the sun's surface has temperatures of only 5,500 degrees Celsius, the Voyager probes reported temperatures of up to 50,000 degrees Celsius for the wall of fire. What the wall of fire really is. But this naturally raises the question of how this can be possible. Shouldn't it be freezing cold so many billions of kilometers away from the sun? Well, to understand why this is not true for all areas, we need to take a quick look at the overall structure of our cosmic home. Basically, the Sun ejects a continuous stream of charged particles into space in the form of solar wind. This creates the aforementioned heliosphere, which is a kind of colossal protective bubble that extends far beyond the planetary orbits and shields us from dangerous cosmic radiation. The outermost boundary of the heliosphere is the heliopause, by definition, interstellar space begins where the solar wind is so weakened that it can no longer overcome the pressure of the interstellar medium. This is the diffuse gas, dust, and plasma that fills the space between the stars. However, the edge of our home system is not a rigid boundary, but rather a dynamic transition zone where two powerful cosmic forces collide and interact. And it's precisely there that the Voyager probes encountered the scorching wall of fire that is currently making headlines. But what does that actually mean? Did the probes really fly through an area of space that is literally on fire? Well, it's not quite as fiery as it sounds. Although the duo measured temperatures between 30 and 50,000 degrees Celsius, there is of course no visible combustion. There is simply no oxygen for that. In detail, the wall of fire is actually a high-energy cloud of particles. Its extreme heat is caused by the rapid solar wind, which races through space at speeds of up to 800 kilometers per second, colliding with the slower interstellar medium. 
This collision creates magnetic turbulence and compression, which propels particles into a higher energy state. But how on earth did Voyager 1 and 2 manage to survive their flight through the wall of fire? How is it that they did not immediately turn into a pile of ash in the face of such immense temperatures? Well, this is thanks to the extremely low density of this area. The plasma here is so widely dispersed that it couldn't harm the probes. However, the sheer heat is by no means the only thing that makes the wall of fire so interesting to experts. It also amazes researchers with its unexpected orientation. Prior to the mission, scientists had believed that the magnetic field on the other side of the heliopause would behave very differently from the one on our side. However, the Voyager data now show that the magnetic fields inside and beyond the heliosphere run almost parallel to each other. This is an equally important and surprising finding, suggesting that the solar system is in reality much more closely linked to its outer environment than our previous models suggest. An Impossible Voyager Discovery Revealing fire walls are not the only spectacles that the Voyager probes were to bring to light in the depths of space. Some time ago, on October 1st, 2022 to be precise, Voyager 1's instruments suddenly sounded the alarm, recording an inexplicably large influx of high-energy radiation. Today, we know that this old probe became a harbinger of an unexpected event that would hit Earth 19 hours later, and that it was one of the most extreme of its kind. Okay, but what actually happened? Well, the high-energy radiation was gamma radiation, and it was so intense that almost all of our observatories, including NASA's Swift and Fermi telescopes, were instantly overwhelmed. It soon became clear that this was the result of an unprecedented gamma ray burst, which subsequently warranted an entire special edition of the scientific journal, the Astrophysical Letters. Officially, the record-breaking event is known by the scientific name GRB 221009A, but unofficially, it is better known as BOAT which is simply an abbreviation for brightest of all time. And rightly so, of course. After all, we're dealing with a spectacle that had an energy of 18 tera electron volts, making it a whopping 70 times brighter than any eruption ever observed. The pressing question that preoccupied astronomers in the aftermath was, of course, what on earth could have triggered this extreme eruption? But that was not all. The event was also accompanied by an extremely strange jet of radiation that pushed the limits of current models of the afterglow of such eruptions. Specifically, experts identified a new component in the radio range of the jet that presented an unknown mystery. But other radiation ranges also revealed puzzling anomalies. For example, the jet appeared to be unusually focused. In April last year, researchers finally succeeded in uncovering the origin of the eruption and with it, the next mystery. One would normally assume that such a violent event would have a violent trigger, but this was not the case. Follow-up investigations with the James Webb Telescope's high-resolution spectrometer showed instead that BOAT was apparently caused by a surprisingly normal supernova. But how can the death of any random star set in motion an event that, according to astronomers, only occurs once every 10,000 years on Earth? Well. That is precisely the question to which we still have no clear answer. In principle, however, experts believe it is possible that the powerful gamma rays are related to a special type of supernova explosion. When fast-spinning, massive stars die, they generate concentrated jets of particles that shoot through space at nearly the speed of light. If these jets are particularly narrow and concentrated, they produce a bright, high-energy beam and thus a structure that was also recorded in the case of the record-breaking burst. In fact, it was one of the narrowest gamma-ray burst jets ever recorded, which is why scientists suspect that the energy of the supernova may have been concentrated in a very similar way. But these are all just assumptions, and the experts readily admit that other factors may also have been involved. And until the mystery is completely solved, a little patience is required because the experts assume that they will have to spend years researching this puzzle. Fortunately, researching the subscribe button only takes a few seconds. Simply click on the thumbs up and then on subscribe to never miss another video from us. We'll see you soon.